Aloha, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to today's live stream. My name is Master Paul. I'm very honored to be connecting with you today. It is a Wednesday. I believe today is the 30th of August. And today I will be focusing on a subject that may connect with some of you. Some of you may come at it with one eyebrow raised. Some of you may not understand why I'm doing a live stream on this subject matter. And some of you may get great value out of it. The subject that we'll be discussing today is how to develop trust in the divine creator. So I encourage all those that are new, just scrolling through the live feed, maybe showed up on your group somewhere. If this is something that has interest to you and you're unable to stay, uh, I would advise you to um, to friend me and subscribe, and you'll know when I go live. And you can always come back to my page to watch it again. So I'm very grateful for this opportunity to continue to serve you. And if you do remain, you will, of course, receive great value in this wisdom and teachings. Uh, my name is Master Paul. I have been doing these live streams for about a year now, and I cover all things soul. Uh, many of you who have already tuned in already know this, and so I'm sharing this with those that are new. And when I say all things soul, what I mean is that soul is the boss. Uh, when, you, when you transform things at the level of soul first, then all of the problems associated with the soul go away. But what a lot of people do not understand is that the soul is the carrier of all the messages of all of your lifetimes. And your messages are your positive and negative choices in all lifetimes or what can be called good and bad karma. Your soul carries that. And therefore, uh, it is like a um, repository of all of our unpleasant choices and all of our good ones. Those show up in our physical life in the form of physical suffering, health issues, uh, relationship problems, financial blockages, and more. And so when we heal things at the level of soul first, then everything else has to shift. So that's one of the beautiful aspects of the wisdom and teachings that I have been sharing for well over a year. My teacher is Master Shah, and he is a world-renowned um, healer. He is also a world-renowned author, has authored over 20 books, 11 New York Times bestsellers. So I'll give you a little background as to the nature of the live streams that I have been doing and will continue to do. And today is on um, how to develop trust with the Divine Creator. Um, and a lot of this will have to do with uh, our breaking down of, of our connection to the Creator. Now, as I said in the beginning, some of us will be very connected <clears throat> or are already very connected and, and this information may be um, uh, of little value to you. But there will be quite a few where this could bring a great deal of value to them because uh, through the course of their life, things may have happened that caused them to question, is there a God? Is there a creator? And so we'll be uh, working with, with that genre today. So I'm going to pause and acknowledge everyone that's tuned in. So welcome Kathy Arnold. Aloha. Welcome also to Ali Fess. Welcome uh, Trizzle. Welcome Alyssa. Good to see you back here, Alyssa. Aloha Monica. <coughs> and welcome also to Susan Birchmore. Welcome Vanessa Thompson. Uh, aloha also to Leandra. And welcome to Shirley Schuster. Aloha, Vanessa. Welcome also, Heather Houston. Welcome, M.A. Drade. And aloha, Suzy Q. Welcome also to Jess Christensen. Welcome and aloha to Kristen Strachan. Welcome, Sharon Dodd. Aloha, Kim Morrison. Welcome also to Suki Singh. And aloha, Pat. Welcome, Tony. Aloha, uh, Shelley Maritzi. And welcome Jessica and family. Aloha Chloe. Welcome also to Dana Knapp. And aloha Rezai Anya. Welcome to Linda Jansen. Aloha to Janice Crosby. And I believe we're just about caught up. Welcome Sanjita. Aloha uh, Melissa. Aloha also to Missy Dodd. So, and welcome also to Monica's mother. So thank you all for joining. Thank you for sharing yesterday's live stream where we focused on serving humanity, chanting love, peace, and harmony. 
Uh, for some of you, it may have been the first understanding of the nature of love, peace, and harmony uh, and the depth of its um, service. I did an entire live stream on the educational aspects of love, peace, and harmony and used it to offer teachings. I have in some live streams just chanted that song for five minutes to offer blessings with extraordinary results. And so yesterday was dedicated to serving all those that have been victims of natural disasters and uh, other life occurrences that have not been too pleasant. And so there was huge, huge, huge blessings that went out. I did not do a soul reading. That's something that I did want to do, was to do a reading as to the uh, power and significance of that trans the blessings that we did yesterday, of the chanting together in group. Uh, because no question about it, it did make a significant difference for all of those that um, that have received out there. One thing I did want to mention, I was chatting with uh, uh, Master Patrick, who is the uh, co-leader of Master Shah's Tao Healing Center here in Honolulu. And he mentioned that I need to uh, remind the students that I've worked with, especially those that have received blessings from me. If you receive the transmission systems, which would be like, uh, I would describe it, for example, as a new heart, a new liver, a new kidney, a new brain, uh, new chakras, whatever it might be. If you receive something like that, then um, <clears throat> make sure, make sure, make sure, make sure every day you connect with it. They're my uh, special treasures I've received with these blessings from Master Paul and Master Shah. Please turn on. Uh, th as I go throughout the day, as I'm chanting, as I'm serving, as I'm singing Love, Peace and Harmony, uh, please continue to radiate, heal, and boost the area for which I received. So if you receive the new heart, make sure you chant, you know, divine heart, divine heart. If you receive new kidneys, same thing. Uh, if you receive the chakra, like a heart chakra, a kundalini, right? divine heart chakra, divine heart chakra, divine kundalini. Uh, it's important because each day you turn it on and work with it, you're clearing additional blockages and you're, um, you're increasing the recovery process. Okay, so I wanted to mention that because one, one of my uh, uh, peers mentioned it to me. So welcome also to Tammy Dixon, Aloha Crane. Welcome, welcome CJ. Welcome also to Lisa Zarniak. And welcome Tiffany Ann. Welcome also to Yvonne Griffin. Aloha Julia. Aloha Ram Swaroop. And aloha, welcome Angela. Welcome also to Vanessa Olivia. Thank you again all for joining. Thank you for hitting the share button and letting other people know about today's live stream. So we're going to go ahead and start our heart to heart, soul to soul connection. I'm going to start by placing our hands in soul light, soul service hand position. Dropping our left hand in front of our heart center. The right hand gently remains pointed towards heaven. And we're going to close our eyes. If it's your morning, you're preparing for your day. If it's your evening, you're releasing the blockages of the day and preparing for uh, resetting the clock, so to speak. So let us fully connect. Bring your thoughts, your mind, and your breath into your lower abdomen. Dear our beloved Divine Creator, all layers of the Divine Tao and Source, Dear all of our spiritual mothers and fathers, masters and ascended masters, gurus, lamas, sifus, saints, buddhas, and bodhisattvas, beloved Jesus, beloved Mother Mary, we love you, honor you, respect you, deeply, deeply appreciate all that you do to serve us individually and collectively. We wish to offer our deepest gratitude to beloved Mother Earth for her incredible and unconditional service to humanity. We offer our deepest gratitude to all the beings of light who serve us, known and unknown. We ask for our beloved Divine Creator today to offer us guidance, wisdom and insights so that we can further align our soul, heart, mind and body to our beloved Divine Creator so that we can release blockages in trust, more fully align our soul to the Divine's heart and soul. <clears throat> Dear the Source Soul Song of Love, Peace and Harmony, transmitted to all souls in all universes. We love you, we honor you, we deeply appreciate you and respect you. We ask most humbly, most sincerely for your unconditional service. We invite all souls in all universes to turn on the source soul song of love, peace and harmony and to chant with us at this time. 
So as we chant love, peace, and harmony together, let us connect heart to heart, soul to soul. For those that are new watching, listening for the first time, this is a blessing. You may make a request silently to heaven and then prepare to receive. Let us serve together. Lula, lula, li. Lula, lula, la, li. Lula, lula, li, lula. Lula, li, lula. Lula, li, lula. Thank you. <clears throat> so welcome also to um, Brenda Hutton. Welcome to Nelson Fiedler. Aloha, both of you. Welcome, Stephanie Michelle Montgomery. Aloha, Carol. Uh, welcome also and aloha to <clears throat> Rogerio uh, Savignano. Welcome, Susan uh, Manifold. And welcome also to Anne Galuzzo. Thank you all for joining. Thank you for sharing, letting other people know about this live stream on developing trust with our divine creator. One of the beautiful things about um, awakening, about opening your spiritual channels, about practicing with your spiritual channels, is you learn to trust the information that is received. Um, I have to say, uh, in America, they, they, they have a statement some people know, some people don't, but it's like, I'm from the show me state. You have to show me before I believe it. Unfortunately, I came in with that kind of mentality. I say unfortunately because my life would probably be a lot easier if I just trusted. But I had to go through a long process of moving from uh, seeing and, and believing to trusting. And my soul journey probably could have been a whole lot faster, shorter, and more pleasurable. Um, but you may be like me. Maybe you're the kind of person that has to have validation proof, see it before you believe it. <clears throat> so when I say the things I say, it comes from a place of, of going from a place of, of having difficulty with trusting to a place of trusting. Now there's layers of that and levels of that for all of us. Some of us have implicit trust. Some of us have a little bit less. Some of us have a lot less. And some of us just don't trust at all. We're not even sure if there's a God or a creator. So wherever you're at is perfectly perfect for you. Uh, this is not a, a judgmental based uh, 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 anything. There are many different places this can come from. I checked in with um, Heaven before starting this live stream about 10 minutes before. And I said, okay, Heaven, what approach do I uh, make in communicating uh, your message and assisting all of the students, all of those that watch and listen, to, um, to receive the highest and best wisdom and guidance and at the same time not challenge any of, their, um, any of their belief systems or anything else that might be happening for them. And the message that I received was what, why, how. So I will follow that guidance and I will uh, uh, touch a little bit before on that on a few things. Now there are people that are watching that had a great deal of trust in Creator 
and over the course of their lifetime it got chiseled away uh, for some of us it might be that we were abused and therefore uh, we we don't necessarily know or trust that there can be a God because if there really was why would why would God allow that to happen to me now I th I don't use the word God in any form other than I will interchangeably use it with creator I might even throw in Allah I might throw in universal consciousness please don't square your head on the verbiage okay uh, this is not religious teachings this is spirituality which honors all forms of beliefs okay so please no squaring of the head so uh, if uh, in the course of your growing up of your lifetime <clears throat> you because um, this is one of the things I heard when I when I when I asked divine uh, for guidance on this what what I heard was depending on the belief systems that individuals grew up with uh, it's it's very um, it can have a very large impact on their trust or alignment to the divine um, the current versions of the Western belief systems, Christian, Christianity, uh, Protestant, all of those variations of that same uh, belief system, <clears throat> believe in, in most cases, this is a gener very general statement, but in my observation, in most cases, there is a belief of a, of a God that is judgmental. Uh, and whether that's 2% of the teaching or a hundred percent of the teaching because and there's certainly that range in, in uh, the Western culture um, it can have a very large impact on a person throughout their life so if they grow up in a Catholic household a Protestant house a household a Christian household and they grow up with variations of um, the Creator is is a, a judgmental creator um, you have to earn God's love blah 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 um, then it creates a problem through the remainder of life. Now I'm going to cover the other uh, variations as well, but we'll start here. And one of the problems it creates is that we start out with this great trust, and uh, this trust is that if we do the right thing, then 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 God will take care of us. And so, as little children, um, we our our minds aren't formulated yet. We are. Uh, our personalities are built upon watching the parents, the peers, the brothers, the sisters. We literally borrow bits and pieces of, of people's communication styles and teachings, and we formulate our own personality uh, over the course of time. And so we really don't uh, formulate any kind of a solid consciousness until around the age of 16, 17, 18. In between them, we're very massageable. So if something happens between 0 and 18, before we have that solid personality built, um, it, could, it could create a substantial rift in our trust factor of divine. Um, so if we, for example, were abused, or if we, for example, were raped, if we're uh, in a situation like that, uh, it can be very guilt orienting it can create a great deal of, of self-esteem blockages but it also creates separation from the divine creator in many cases because of the way the teachings are, are brought to us about things being judgmental about things being conditional love being conditional and so it creates rifts in our personality and those in turn follow us to the remainder of our life now that's one example some of us we didn't have that problem we grew up in a relatively healthy household there was not those kinds of problems going on and we uh, go through life age 20 25 30 get married and we get an abusive person in our life at that point in time maybe they uh, 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 do any number of things again we might go through the process of questioning creator um, some of us lose a very special soul in our life the death of a child the death of a, of a loved one a mother a father a, a husband a wife uh, an animal even and so sometimes when we lose someone very close to us it it uh, it instantly challenges our trust in our divine creator so uh, I, and I'm, I'm welcome uh, open open the line to any of you that have other comments about what might have caused you to lose a bit of trust and the divine creator because it might not follow into these examples these are just ones i'm pulling out of the air as potential examples that 
uh, condition us to potentially lose trust in the divine creator. Now, some of us lose trust in creator because of um, uh, an internal knowingness that what we have been taught about God and religion and beliefs and creator and uh, we just know on an intrinsic basis it's not right. And it really bothers us when people try to shove uh, something down our throat. Um, which is why I'm very, I try to be very, very careful about um, the way I communicate so I don't push anybody's buttons and honor everyone's belief systems. So, uh, but I was one of those people that I just didn't, you know, I heard, I grew up in a Christian household and I, I, I got it and I, I love, love Jesus. I love Mother Mary. I talk to them daily. I, you know, I bow my head to them. I also bow my head to Buddha and to God. Uh, but it wasn't always that way. Early on in childhood, I did, you know, uh, still have a great fondness for Jesus and Mother Mary. But I didn't have a great fondness for the teachings because the school of thought that I grew up in, which may be similar for some of you, uh, was about um, a, uh, a conditional God. Okay, so I see some comments here where, like Tiffany Ann, uh, on top of losing a brand new car, totaled almost losing her job, being broken in an abusive relationship, <clears throat> all in a very short period of time. Yeah, that will challenge your belief. You know, how could this possibly happen to me? Is there really a God? So these kinds of things have, can, and potentially could happen to any one of us. So these are all various roots uh, that enter our lives, either from the beginning of our life or somewhere in the middle of our life, that could cause us to have separation from our Creator. And so as I offer uh, various guidances on this, you may get snippets of information that is very valuable to you, that can serve you well, uh, and uh, you may have some insights of your own. The thing that I want to, to really uh, bring to the table is that we have to take a look mostly at what did we set our foundation in because our foundation, our belief system, our foundation is what set up our personality, the way we look at the world. We all have a certain pair of glasses over our eyes. And those glasses represent the entirety of our individual and unique beliefs. Those each individual and unique beliefs causes you to look at something and say yes or no to it. Causes you to have an experience and say, uh, I trust or I don't trust. In other words, our foundational teachings of who our divine creator is has a great deal of effect on our trust in the divine. Some of us we just know, we just trust, there's just no question about it, we're good to go, okay? And you are amongst the most fortunate ones where your soul is very, very connected and you just uh, attune to it. <clears throat> In the teachings we work with, we call it an, an unshakable heart. To have an unshakable heart, to know very clearly that your creator has got your back, so to speak. Now, there's other uh, laws that are at work here. These are what's called universal laws, the law of cause and effect. What has been done upon others eventually returns to you. You lie, people will lie to you. You cheat, you will get cheated upon, and so forth. So these immutable universal laws are part and parcel of what could create a separation between you and the divine. One of our beloved students mentioned a moment ago she lost her car, her house, her kid, uh, not her kid, um, her car, her, her job financial conditions you know some people joke it's like um if if you if you if you lost your car your house and your dog then play the the country western song backwards maybe you'll get them back um these things have most likely happened to all of us at one point in time where we've had a culmination of bad things happen all at once and there's other of us that have fortunately not experienced that but possibly could as we move forward into this very um unstable future in humanity, uh, there is a reasonable likelihood, 50%, that all of us watching today could lose our jobs, could lose our health, could lose our homes, could lose everything. Uh, we could lose 
internet connection. We could use light. We could lose access to food and water. All of us have that very real possibility, 50%. The other 50% might never happen. Why? Because of the conditions we're in today. It's a very pivotal time for humanity. So this subject matter is very relevant. Very, very, very relevant. Because if we recognize that we are all um, souls from the one creator, souls from the one source, if we recognize that the, the teachings that were taught us that caused us to have a set of beliefs that may or may not be serving us now, the people that entered our life that may have caused abuse to us or uh, uh, activities in our world that have caused a separation from Creator, these conditions were not accidental. You've heard me many, many times talk about uh, uh, spiritual virtue, spiritual debt, karma, good karma, bad karma. You've heard me many times speak before about these uh, precede our entrance into this life. Our soul carries all of our virtue and spiritual debt from all lifetimes, and it literally um, creates the conditions in which we enter this life, including those conditions which create how we look at things, how we believe things, our, our, the belief system we came into, the belief system our parents pushed upon us, whether it was good for us or not. Um, these conditions, uh, when that, that, that loved one, that child, that, that daughter, that son, that husband, that mother, that father, when they departed this world, maybe you were eight years old, maybe you were 30 and they were eight years old, um, these were not accidental conditions. These are all part of a very, very grand scheme, a, a web, if you, if you would, of all of our lives and souls interconnecting. Each soul is individual with our individual karmas. Each soul is uh, very, very connected. And so <clears throat> when we uh, fail to recognize our individual uh, journeys and our collective connections where we can um, run into difficulty with we can run into difficulty with remaining in a place of trust with the divine as the divine created all of the billions upon billions upon billions of souls another universal law was given the universal law of free will we have free will we're very blessed at least on this earth. I don't know about other universes if they have that, but here on earth we do. So as souls, we have free will. And we have made choices oh, through the course of all of our lifetimes that have brought about the conditions we have today. Your uh, loved ones have made different choices in their lifetimes that have brought about the conditions that affect them positively or negative today. In uh, searching for how to realign to the highest trust with the divine. It starts with recognizing the first two laws, the law of cause and effect and the law of um, free will. When we recognize the law of cause and effect, that nothing is accidental, then that also means we can't really blame God. We can't really uh, say that it's something outside of us. When we recognize the effect of free will, free will says that each soul makes its own choices. Free will says that even though I'm connected to this soul in this life as a loved one, they have their own soul journey that was activated well before mine or after mine. They have had many lifetimes that I have not been involved with. I have many lifetimes they have not been involved with. And this free will of us individual souls connect in this lifetime. The conditions that happen in this lifetime are perceived by our personality. If we grew up with the belief of a conditional creator, then we, we blame God. Because a loving God certainly wouldn't do that, right? A loving God wouldn't take this person away from me. A loving God wouldn't cause somebody to abuse me. So we're back to the first immutable law. The law of cause and effect. Whenever we blame outside of us, we separate ourselves from Creator. Whenever we don't take responsibility for the law of cause and effect, which brings about the good and the unpleasant, we're not in a place where we can return uh, to the heart of the divine 
with any degree of speed anyway. So the, uh, the separation from our Creator, the rebuilding of the trust with Creator has to incorporate those two truths, the, the law of free will, the law of cause and effect. Because when those are incorporated in our concepts, our minds, when, when we incorporate them in our daily life, how can we possibly blame the Creator for creating anything that happens in our world? The Creator gave us free will and the power to manifest whatever we place our focus upon. We have the power to pull ourselves up out of very unpleasant conditions. We have the power to create very unpleasant conditions, all of which are at our disposal. But when we uh, grow up with a series of teachings that do not teach us these base universal law foundations, we create a problem for ourselves. And then through the course of life, when things happen to us or around us or about us, we simply point outside of us and, and say it's, it's their fault. I have, it has nothing to do with me. It's not, I couldn't possibly be um, uh, responsible for my feelings. I couldn't possibly be responsible for blaming somebody else. Uh, but that's where, really where it lies at. We can make a choice to be very unhappy about events that have occurred and still be in love with Creator. That's one choice of free will. So every one of us has a choice to either be in alignment with these truths or to not be. The longer we stay out of alignment with these universal laws, then we tend to stay in a place of hurt, in a place of pain. We're not able to, um, to level up and move forward. Realigning ourselves to the heart of the divine starts with clearing the blockages in our soul, heart, mind, and body. Remember, I started out by teaching soul, uh, soul carries the messages of all lifetimes. Soul carries the messages of all of our good and unpleasant services. And we are the physical mirror reflection of aspects of that. So in this life, it's sometimes things are predetermined. When we will die, when someone we, we love, they have their own karma, they have their own free will, they have their own spiritual virtue and spiritual debts. If they leave, uh, uh, easy for us to say it's God's fault, but the reality is that they have their own, they're, they're bound by the same laws we are. So we have to uh, bring ourselves to life starting today, starting now, with this truth as part of our life. When we do, what happens? This is, this is where the changeover point occurs because we all want a greater connection to source even if we don't verbally state it out loud. The greatest connection to source is complete enlightenment. That is when we are love. That is when we are, we just, we are the radiant light and love like our beloved Jesus. Just a, 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 the perfect example of radiant light and love like our beloved Mother Mary, our beloved Kuan Yin or Buddha. These are examples of souls that have went through everything you're suffering with. They trust me, they've all been taught wrong teachings. They've all been abused. They've all uh, lost their life uh, un unexpectedly. They've all lost loved ones unexpectedly. These great beings, they have been around more than once. They didn't just come into existence as a great being. Uh, every uh, soul goes through a process of return back to the Creator. And so these great beings went through great suffering uh, on their way to the greatness that they are. And that's why they can be so compassionate for us because they have experienced that. They understand the great love of the Divine Creator. They've moved to acknowledge and accept that great love and accordingly they are a vessel of that great love. Uh, they take no claim for a healing miracle. Jesus doesn't say, I did it. Jesus said, Creator did it. But Jesus was the vessel through which that blessing came through. Same thing with Kuan Yin, same thing with any of the great beings of light. They never take credit. They are a more pure vessel because they went through the process of releasing the false information. They stepped into the truth of free will and the truth of uh, cause and effect and they started making shifts in their life to realign their soul heart mind and body to the Creator and so we're moving into that now 
How do we move our soul, heart, mind, and body and realign to the Creator? We start, as you know, with the forgiveness. We have to forgive ourselves first for accepting anything that, uh, that might not be serving us as a truth. Maybe we've been holding on to blame of somebody that abused us all this time. Got to let it go, guys. You might have been the, the abuser first. You don't know. Uh, remember, the experiences that happen in our life are, generally speaking, mirror images of the blockages at the level of soul. So we have to go through the processes of forgiveness. Uh, I see a pop up here on ego. Okay, yeah, ego is a, is a big thing to let go, very much on the hard side, because ego is related to mindsets, attitudes, beliefs, ego attachments. <laughs> My teacher, Master Shah, says easier to move a mountain than to uh, release aspects of the ego. True, but it can be done. How do we do it? We do it through conscious action. Okay, so when we uh, wake up every day, Remind ourselves, okay, anything negative that happens in my life today, I will look at it differently. I will look at it from the eyes of cause and effect and from the eyes of I have free will. I can make a choice of how to respond to this. I have taught before how to respond in gratitude even in negative conditions. Granted, not always easy, but it is a choice. I have taught before how to forgive those that, uh, that are harmful to us. Uh, a beautiful soul two days ago sent me a text saying, how do you have an open heart in a relationship where the person is abusive? <laughs> how do you answer that, right? So I had to respond back to her and I shared with, and this, this message goes to all of you because we have to apply the wisdoms. I say, uh, it's not an easy answer. The first thing is, do not allow yourself to remain in the... In, uh, you know, in a abusive situation, do your best to remain compassionate for that soul. Do your best to do forgiveness in case you were the abuser in previous times. Do your part. Uh, chant love, peace, and harmony. Do your part, but do not allow yourself to stay in an abusive situation if things aren't shifting. Because your part is to clear any of the potential spiritual debts that could be present and showing themselves to you at that time. Uh, but if you are doing your part by offering forgiveness, by being compassionate, by also not allowing yourself to be in an abusive scenario, and things are not changing, then you need to leave. You have cleaned up your portions of the spiritual debt if in fact you are doing an authentic forgiveness, offering and asking, because you don't want that to follow you lifetime to lifetime. So that's one example of being present. Uh, and it's very easy for a person like that that's in an abusive situation to blame God. But this person was aware enough. They said, how do I keep an open heart in this situation? It was a very thoughtful question. It was a very present question. It was one in which a, the person had obviously done enough homework in their life where they were willing to recognize the nature of the two universal truths that we're discussing today. Cause and effect, free will. They recognized they had both potentialities available to them and they wanted to make a better choice so that they didn't continue things that were not working. And so uh, in this example there was a child in the relationship. You know what's the the child father relationship there right? Uh, if the father's abusive to the child as well. And so these are ways in which we can return uh, our trust to the divine. When we step into our responsibility aspects as having been taught this last 10-15 minutes. Then we can allow, and this is the most appropriate word, we must allow for what we wish to happen, happen. We are creators. <clears throat> we, in order to create what we want, and it starts with responsibility of what we have been creating. And we must dissolve those blockages of what we have been creating. We must then change the present moment by being more focused on what we are wanting. And if anything negative does come up, we dissolve it as quickly as possible so that we don't have to deal with it again and again and again in each new day. We dissolve it using the wisdom and tools taught through Master Shah. And uh, receive, you know, Tao blessings to help clear things a lot faster. <clears throat> and so as we move forward, then we, uh, if we move forward, especially with gratitude, if we move forward with hope 
and positivity. It doesn't matter if you move forward with hope and positivity and you lose your job a week later, okay? That is not a reason to spiral downward. No, you don't know what that means. If you're making all the right shifts, all the positive shifts, you're doing everything correctly in that you're doing your best, right? Uh, you're not holding on to anger. You are forgiving. You are being honoring of self. You are not putting yourself down. You're also not blaming God. You're basically just being uh, on the right path. And then if something, uh, what could be seen as negative happens, like losing the job or a car accident or something of that nature, you must continue the positive perspective on it. Because that loss of job could mean that something much better is waiting, but it can't occur until the job is lost. Why would it happen like that? Because you're creating all this positive momentum, right? And part of that positive momentum might be that you're ready for more wealth and sustenance in your life, which can't happen at your current job, and therefore a loss of a job occurs. But if that happens and you're not in the right place mentally, then you may derail the manifestation of the job that's waiting for you. It requires this conscious presence that heaven is working on your behalf. Do you think for a moment that heaven would not work on your behalf? Really? How, did, how do any souls get to heaven? How do any beings of light get there even for a second if they are not doing things of service? All the angels, all the beings of light, all your heaven's team, every soul in heaven is there to serve us humanities to serve you so they are all doing their very best to uplift them and, and pick us up 100 percent of the time it is we here on the front lines that are getting uh knocked off our, our our trajectory because we're not keeping the right perspective on things when something happens that might question your trust in the divine that might question the, your manifestation abilities etc etc just stop and go okay this negative response is a automatic built on the past perspective that no longer has a place in my life i choose to de-release this uh, old mindset this old pattern it's based on false beliefs i now know cause and effect i now know uh, uh, free will i can choose gratitude i can choose continued positive manifestation I don't know how it's going to work out, but I trust that the divine will cause everything to work out perfectly. I tell you, this happens and it happens more and more the more you repeat that little circle. Okay, I have been experiencing this a long, long time. And the more I allow, again the key word, the more I allow uh, divine to take care of it, it happens. I just have to allow. Uh, there's a trip in Europe th that I need to go to. I have to pay two months of all my responsibilities where I live. That's a lot, right? That's 3000 a month for all my financial responsibilities. I have to pay for two months of them while I'm not working for one of those months while I'm spending another 3000 in a foreign country to go be there for a month uh, to watch my teacher and to pay for the rent over there at the place I'm staying. That's $9,000 that has to manifest out of nowhere. How's that going to happen? Honestly, I got no idea. But I trust the divine. I trust that the path that I am on, which is to serve humanity, will be supported. That divine will bring about those conditions in which everything will work out. Now, I didn't just jump into that place of trust. Where when I say that, I really mean it. I, I've seen it happen. I went through a slow process over several years of moving into this place of trust. This is not a race. This is a marathon. You move yourself into these layers of trust step by step. You move yourself there by applying what we have been saying today. Okay? So as you... Uh, post i see all your posts pop up i'm not ignoring them some of you keep saying well yeah this happened to me and this happened to me okay you can wallow in the suffering you can wallow in the uh it happened to me but is that in alignment with the two universal laws your free will is allowing you to say it happened to me it's outside of my responsibility
I have no choice in the matter about how I react. I have no choice in the matter about how I feel about it. I am just a victim. That's a choice. Is it serving you? Is it serving you? Is it helping you? Is it bringing you in alignment with your divine creator? Your creator is delivering to you 100% of what you want. You want to not trust? You're getting 100% of that. You want to think you're the victim? You are getting 100% of that. Your creator is not going to, uh, uh, your creator is not like the country of China where they decide what you will see and what you will not see on the internet. Your creator is not like that country and say, well, we're going to, I'm going to uh, uh, um, support this part of your thoughts, but not this part of your thoughts. No, the creator is, is serving you with whatever you want to manifest. Your thoughts, your free will are yours. Take responsibility. Okay, Step into the role of the soul that you are. Understand the nature of cause and effect. Uh, do, do not allow yourself to get knocked off. That um, condition that, that, that came to you doesn't matter what it was that knocked you off your rocker. Whatever it was, you are not a victim of it unless you choose to be. Uh, you just need to look at it. Okay, divine did not cause this. If it was from somebody outside of you, that's their soul, their journey, their free will, their stuff. You just happen to be a part of that stuff and how you respond dictates your future. Okay? So be conscious, be present, make conscientious choices and recognitions. B, yeah, I see somebody say, I turn on love, peace, and harmony. Brilliant. Why? Why is that so important? Because it keeps us in the right frequency, mindset, attitude, and belief. It assists us in the positive manifestation of more of what we're wanting. Some of us, no matter what, we still can't seem to rub two nickels together. Okay? <clears throat> Are you allowing for a new job to occur? Are you allowing for different conditions to occur? Are you going out of your way to get a new education? Uh, you know, some people at the, at the Dow Center, they call upon me for all things technical, right? All things related to, to internet, websites, you know, all that stuff. How did I learn all that? I didn't know anything. I stuck my nose on the grindstone and I learned it. Accordingly, I've been able to build a website and a following and serve people at a higher level. It didn't happen overnight and didn't happen because I sat there and just allowed it to happen. Your creator will create for you what you want, but you still have to get educated. You still will have to do those things that will bring that additional money to you, okay? You can't do the same things you've always done, whine about not getting enough money, and make no additional changes in your life to create that. Be proactive. So these are just examples of how to shift your negative mindset, attitudes, and beliefs, because those collectively are separating you from your creator. It doesn't seem that obvious, but if you look at it, when we are in the, the, the I am beaten down role, the victim role, when we are playing this game and not being uh, on the right side of the game, we are not aligned to our creator. We are separate from our creator. I know that unequivocally because when we are aligned to our creator, these things don't happen. When we are aligned to our creator, when we allow our creator, when we trust our creator, Good things come to us because we allow it. We believe it. We know it will occur because we trust our Creator. The things that disallow us from having that set of conditions is everything I've been talking about. Okay? And so you want to move from where you're at to this. It's not a race, it's a marathon. Your part is to be consistent, your part is to awaken to those areas that you can adjust and you can shift and then allow Creator to bring you what your focus is upon. So we're going to do a quick practice now to release some of these blockages. And um, if any of you are interested in a crown chakra blessing to release the blockages that are inhibiting you from opening to trusting the Creator, happy to deliver that to you. Uh, crown chakra blessings are 100. And contact me through Facebook Messenger if interested. Okay, let's do a practice together. Start by placing our hands in soul light, soul service hand position. We drop our left hand in front of the heart center. Let us close our eyes. I'm going to walk you through 
a forgiveness practice <clears throat> and then we're going to clear some blockages between us and our beloved creator that can assist us all right close your eyes dear as appropriate if it is comfortable please repeat after me dear my beloved divine creator and you can use whatever name you want I love you I honor you I deeply deeply respect you I wish to sincerely apologize I have in this lifetime blamed you more than once for things that have happened in my life I may have raised my fist to you, yelled at you. I may have cursed at you. I wish to, from my heart and soul, with my head on the ground, ask your forgiveness. I know that there is truly nothing to forgive because you love me unconditionally anyway. But it is important for me to ask your forgiveness so that I can awaken further. I need to learn to honor myself and love myself more, to appreciate my intelligence and all of the things that I do have instead of blaming, criticizing, judging others, judging myself, and looking at life as if I'm a victim. I wish to sincerely apologize and ask your blessings, my beloved Creator. Please bless me to allow your love and your light to enter my life. Please bless me to allow all of the beautiful things that you shower in my life to be seen. Please bless me to manifest more positivity and more love, light, and compassion in my life please bless me my beloved creator to release all the negative mindsets negative attitudes negative beliefs and those things that have kept me from being responsible for my life and moving forward in love peace and harmony I am extremely grateful for everything that you have done for me my beloved creator and I thank you from my heart for your blessings today. So we will chant divine love. Your visualizing will be the divine's heart opening up, showering incredible divine love upon your soul, upon your heart. <clears throat> for your body power, keep the same hand position, soul light, soul service hand position. And let us chant with your heart, sending your love to the divine, receiving the divine's love. Divine love, divine love, divine love, divine love, divine love. Divine love, divine love, <coughs> divine love, divine love, divine love, divine. Divine love, divine love, divine love. Receive the divine's love. Open your heart. Divine love. Divine love, divine love. 
continue to repeat, Dear all the souls in this and all lifetimes, if I have ever spoken to you, thought unpleasant words about you, or created unpleasant actions that has caused you to have a lack of trust in the divine, I sincerely apologize. I may have taught wrong spiritual teachings that caused you to separate from the divine. I may have made abusive remarks or actions to you that caused you to believe there was no divine. I may have done other things that I cannot remember. I sincerely apologize. Please forgive me and receive my love. Continue to send your beloved Creator your greatest love. Continue to receive your Creator's greatest love. Divine love. Divine love. Divine love. Divine love. Divine love. Divine love, divine love, divine love, divine love, divine. Divine love, divine love, divine love. Ask the divine, please, my beloved divine, please remain in my heart. So that when I am in difficult conditions, I can easily connect to you, feel your love, so that I can easily allow your love and light to manifest the highest and best outcome. Please stay in my heart, my beloved divine, so that if anything unpleasant happens, I can easily turn to you and trust that the highest and best outcome will occur even if I cannot see it in this moment. I love you, my beloved Divine Creator. I thank you, my beloved Divine Creator. Bow your head as appropriate nine times to the Divine Creator with the deepest gratitude. Ha, ha, ha. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, so thank you for all those who have stuck around through this entire live stream. I know some of you had to run. Uh, for those who just came in, this was a very powerful live stream with a great deal of wisdom that could serve you well. I encourage you to uh, watch the re replay after we finish. Uh, it will take a few minutes and then you can watch it again. Um, as with all wisdom, it is only of value when you practice it. So I would recommend for everybody, uh, unless you feel you've got a good grip on this information, to watch it one more time and make bullet point notes of the various places where you can catch these times when we separate ourselves from divine, where we can recognize those areas in our life that... Um, that have caused us to have separation from divine so that we can reset our our uh, limiting thinking that has caused us to not align uh, our heart and soul to our beloved creator and uh, i'm looking forward to seeing some of your comments on today's uh, session uh, any insights that you might have had including any third eye images uh, the experiences that you may have etc So welcome to Anne-Marie Grant. Welcome also Abby Lynn. Welcome Matthew. Welcome Andrea. Welcome Indy. Aloha Michelle. And welcome also to Sharon Allen, Christine Barker, <coughs> Peggy Blank, Kate Nicole. Uh, uh, 
anybody else whose name I may have missed, forgive me. Welcome to everybody. <clears throat> Janet says uh, she is vibrating. Shirley says thank you. She loved the talk today. Uh, it's been a very big pleasure for me to see your your shifts. I can tell, energetically I can tell, I can tell in your responses uh, that many of you have been practicing the wisdom, the teachings, the blessings, and it has made shift in your life. And this is credit to my teacher, Master Shah. Uh, I only repeat the wisdom that he's brought to humanity. He takes no credit. He gives credit to Creator because uh, the wisdom that, that he flows in his books and that he speaks is from Creator. So a, a, uh, a good teacher uh, is always one that takes no credit. So that's why I appreciate Master Shah. <clears throat> Lisa, love and peace. Uh, Shirley says, thank you. Love the talk today. Wish we could have shared public. Um, I don't know why it's not allowing the share, uh, but uh, Vanessa, I appreciate your teachings. Thank you for putting all the known into the words, into the worlds. Um, felt a lot of yawning and emotional. Uh, Lisa says, helps her to breathe better. Good. Releasing of blockages. Uh, Monica says, thank you. She, she saw the Creator. Beautiful. Janice says, tears. Um, uh, when I sing, her heart opens. Wonderful. So thank you all. I encourage you, if you have not already done so, download the Source Soul Song of Love, Peace and Harmony. Uh, in Kristen Rojas' post, she mentions it there. Alyssa says, Aloha, Master Paul. That was beautiful. So timely in her life, both physical and emotional uh, blockages. Uh, gratitude overflowing. Luna says she's in such a deep, deep state of mind, vibration as well as an open, euphoric, beautiful feeling. And she is so thankful for the guidance. Beautiful. I'm very happy. Very, very happy. <clears throat> and so, a uh, quick reminder this Sunday, the 3rd, uh, 9.30 a.m. Hawaii time, uh, add time accordingly, I, I initiate my open spiritual channels program. So if it's something you've been sitting on the fence on, please um, consider signing up for that. You can do, uh, uh, it's a 12 week program in which I talk about the five major spiritual channels, the seven chakras, and the two energy channels, energy and matter channel. Um, each week is focused on a very specific topic. We do very focused practices, group practices, and of course I'm offering blessings during the entire time. Um, at the end of this 12-week period and during this 12-week period, you will notice huge openings in your spiritual awareness, huge openings in your heart. You will clear emotional blockages, uh, some physical pain and suffering. Your energy will very likely improve quite a bit. Um, basically, there's probably no aspect of your life that, that will not be positively impacted by the end of that 12-week period. How can I say that with confidence? Been there, done that. I know it's true. So I encourage you to, um, to sign up for that if that's something that you can do. It is recorded, of course, if you're unable to make the exact live time. <coughs> and there's a during the week uh, group practice. Uh, each individual will have their individual homework to do. So it is a small honor fee for the 12-week course of only $30 per week. Um, so it's a one-time honor fee of $360 or you can pay in three installments. But follow the link that Kristen Rojas put in her uh, chat and uh, send me a Facebook message if you have any questions, okay? Also, thank you for sharing, letting other people know about it. So uh, tomorrow I will return. I may be out on the island somewhere. It's a Thursday, time off with my wife, so I might be somewhere else. But I will tune in and connect with you regardless, okay? So thank you, thank you, thank you. Love you, love you, love you. All the beings of light respectfully return. Gong song, gong song, gong song. Bye-bye, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow.